And excited to be joined by the man in the middle of the Raiders offensive line, our pal Andre James. And Andre, I just want to start here, man, before we get into all the fun stuff. Make me a little bit smarter, right? We heard from, from Coach yesterday, and he talked about just the kind of monumental, the, the gargantuan task that Jermaine had last week, midweek, switching from the right side to the left side. Like, what does that look like for an offensive lineman? You know, it, that's, it's a huge responsibility being on the left side uh, as opposed to the right and just being able to make that switch, you know, so quick. Uh, so hats off to him. He went in that in there and, you know, completely just battled all game long. He had a really good game. So it, it's not easy. Everything's opposite. So the play calling, your your technique, everything's different. So to be able to go and do what he did uh, last Sunday was really in, quite incredible. You know, really against a, a really – Really, really good Jets defense, too. I mean, that's like, I mean, I'm sure you know better than that from top to bottom. They're really good at what they do. But, oh, yeah, no you know, problem. does that change anything for you to not have Colton in there and to have to kind of go through some of those changes? Or you're like, hey, I got five guys here. We're moving as one. Like, we just got to keep rocking. <laughs> you know, it doesn't change too much for me. Mainly the left guard. At left, left guard, okay. there's a lot of communication in there. And there, there's a lot of things like how you want to fit double teams and stuff like that. So for me, not as much. Uh, there, there's more communication from me going into him and just how he – you know, uh, accepts it. So, yeah, it would be more on the left guard, and I think those two had great communication all, all game long, and, uh, yeah, they did their thing. Really? You think the left guard more than the right guard in, in kind of the situation that you're bringing out? Like you talk to the left guard more than you do the guy on the right? No, I think I'm saying that as oh, Jermaine. I see. Oh, I see. Yeah, Jermaine oh, I see to talk to the left yeah, guard yeah, a little yeah, more, yeah, because yeah. yeah, they're you know, that makes exactly sense. right next to each other. So, yeah. You know, it's been obviously a really exciting two weeks. We were talking about it. Good energy in this building, right? Guys are walking around smiling. Obviously, the results on the field help a lot in that mm -hmm. regard. But when you kind of look at, at just the offensive line, the big fellows up front, like, do you think that the past two games, the past two wins, are the best games that you've played in 2023? Or do you think that, hey, we're still kind of ascending and still trying to get to where we want to go? You know, I definitely always see there's a lot of room for improvement, and uh, especially for myself. And uh, I think that gives us a lot of hope and uh, it, it almost gives us the, some excitement because, you know, we see a lot of success, but then you turn on the tape, it's like, man, if we would have just done this, we would have done that, it would have been, you know, that five-yard carry would have been a 15, 20. So it almost kind of gets you excited and kind of gives you energy because, like, man, we could really we could really run the ball even better. So, it, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I would say that's these two are our best games, but I definitely think we're getting some good momentum going forward. You can talk about the guy who's been running the ball a lot is our guy Josh Jacobs, right, oh, yeah. coming off his two statistics. <laughs> statistically speaking, his best games of, of 2023. I mean, what have you kind of seen from Josh over the past couple weeks? Have you Has it been anything different, or is it really just Josh is now, you know, he talks about a post game, like he really is kind of getting those reps, and he's getting a lot of them. Yeah, I think what we're seeing also, too, is, uh, you know, ball, a Bo's call on the run, and mm -hmm. uh, we, we feel it. There's momentum in, in the play calling, and we, we, we definitely want to make it an emphasis of running the ball, and as offensive line, that gets you excited. So, especially when you got a dude like eight back there, Josh Jacobs, you, you want to block for him. You want to you want to get him those handoffs. You want to get him those carries because he, he attacks every day with you know energy and effort. And you know you know every time he's going to get the ball in his hands, he's going to give you everything he's got. You know what does it feel? At least from like our view in the box, like it it feels like you can almost sense when the run game, when Josh and the five of you guys are just like in the zone. You know what <laughs> I mean? It feels like you kind of go in that slow mo matrix, dodging the bullets kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. what does it feel like for you guys? Like to your point, when Bo's calling run after run after run, what does it feel like being in that kind of mode? Oh, it's great, man. You know, we 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 talk all week long, and it was like sometimes you know a play might not get uh, you know early in the game, it might not get work into those those 10 yard carries 15 yard carries it's it's about building momentum into later in the game and that that's what you see in these last couple of games is is you know late in the game we see the run game really start to take over and i think that's just the momentum and you know just using the physicality and it's just starting to wear on defenses that we're really being able to you know take their will away from them you know we hear that term all the time about you know an offensive line leaning on the defensive line right kind of making you know feeling heavy like do you guys is that something you guys can feel during the course of course of four quarters where you're like Okay, like we're getting we're getting we're getting close to that moment. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you definitely feel, especially when we're using tempo and it, you ju they've just been taking on double teams, you know, all all game long, and so it definitely wears on them, and you definitely do feel it, and it almost gets you like a little more excited about okay, let's keep doing this. Yeah, we talk about being in the zone, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that certainly helps, right? When you when you're yep. like, hey, I know that we're close, but yep, no you know, it, it's been so exciting, I think, for this fan base to watch this team the past couple weeks, right? With all the new changes, we see, you know, we see Josh, we see Bo Hardigree doing his thing, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy under center has changed as well. Aiden's out there doing his thing young guy with a great mustache uh <laughs> what is and i think the the one question that we've gotten from so many fans and i figured well who's the better best guy to ask what's he like in the huddle 
right? Because we see him in the press conference, right? Really mm-hmm. calm, cool, collected. We kind of see these moments of him having fun a little bit off the field, but like in the huddle, getting the play call. And what's Aiden like? Yeah, he's locked in. That's I mean, that's a one word I can describe to you know to say him. And it's rare to see that from a rookie. You know, such poise and you know uh, just everything he does, he does with a purpose. You know, what I mean, he gets us really going, and you know, I'm I'm ex- always excited to be blocking for him because he. he his intensity and the way he's locked in, you know, it gets you gets you excited. Has, was there a moment, whether it was, you know, obviously training camp or the past couple of weeks, where you're like, oh, okay, we're, we'll be okay with Aiden there? Because obviously there's so yeah. much change. And we talk about the past, even the past 9, 12 months, so many changes on that side of the football. But was there mm-hmm. a kind of moment you can remember like, all right, the young guy's going to yeah. be good? I do remember. It was early on, I think, like even like maybe it was OTAs or training camp uh, – Whereas like the old line was in there for like watching like some seven on seven clips where we just were kind of stuck. Like sometimes that happens when you're just watching them run routes. And I was like, man, who's this number four kid? And I think it was Alex Barge. He was like, that's Aiden. He can sling it. And I was like, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> so that was like probably one of the first times I was like, man, this kid can really throw the ball. And you know, we see it now. And it's like, yeah, he's really starting to take games over. And, you know, just to see that from a rookie is really impressive. And I think for us, again, from kind of the layman's point of view, I think what's been really exciting for us to watch Aiden is it feels like obviously game one, you know, there's an improvement from game two to, you know, compared to game one. But it feels like even kind of half to half some of the adjustments that he's been able to make. And we talk about kind of staying right here. I mean, it feels like this is a guy that comes in that can get, can, can dissect. And really from series to series, half to half, it feels like this guy's getting better. Oh, yeah, no doubt. It, you know, for a rookie, it's there's always going to be uh, some uh, nervousness. There's going to be some nerves going in there. You know, starting your first NFL game, but to, to watch how calm he is, and you know, even when something doesn't even go his way or something do, doesn't go right offensively, the way he he locks back in and he just resets, it's it's very impressive. You know, we talk about uh, you know the quarterback essentially being the guy, just like you, the only two guys on on the team that that touch the ball every single offensive play. Mm-hmm. But again, he's a rookie, so how does it work for you guys? Are you allowed to to kind of raz him? Are we allowed? Does Aiden have like rookie <laughs> duties? Like, how does this whole thing work? <laughs> you know, I, I don't. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't have. We only have one rookie right now in the O line room, and that's kind of like our rookie. He gets yeah, his yeah, donuts yeah. and uh, Chick Fil A <laughs> in the morning. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't do too much hazing of the, of the rookie quarterback because he's got already got a lot in his. Yeah, play. I was gonna say he's got a lot of things to <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah, get yeah. through for just the, the course of a week. But you know, obviously, team's getting ready, Andre, to go off to uh, Fly East, take on the Miami Dolphins, a really good Miami Dolphins team. You and I are talking on the way up, a bunch of friendly faces that we'll see when we're there. But uh, when you look at the Dolphins, right, and, and so much gets, uh, you know, so much gets talked about about their offense, how explosive they can be. All all the wide receivers, all the points they score. When you look at their defense, though, I mean, no no slouches there on that side of the football. Like, what kind of challenge do they present to you guys this weekend? You know, they, they have a great defense. Every It's like every week in the NFL. Yeah. It's always a good defense. But, uh, you know, we've got some familiar faces, you know, uh, that we're, we're used to seeing. I've, we've played them a couple times in my past. So, you know, it, there's, it's always going to be a challenge. You know, I, I think we're, we're up for it. You know, AP talked earlier today, Andre, and he was just talking about some of the um, – uh, not additions, the amendments to the schedule, how the schedule changed a little bit, especially towards the back end of the week, getting ready for that East Coast time zone, getting ready for that journey. Uh, how, you know, for the, 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 you know, the layman like me, like how challenging is it to go fly East, uh, change time zones, do a quick, fast, in a hurry, and be ready to go 10 a.m. West Coast time? Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's very hard, especially traveling back East. But uh, on those game days, you just got a lot of adrenaline going, mm-hmm. so you just you don't even really think too much about it. Um, what we're doing right now, the AP, what AP is doing right now with the schedules, we're really trying to start earlier. So it's almost like we're already kind of like on East Coast time. We're starting real early in the morning, and then we'll get you know done earlier in the day. So I, I really like what he's doing. I think it's very smart. I think it's going to help us. Yeah, I mean, whatever he's doing is working, right? You know, two games in, two wins for you guys. Obviously, a ton of components that go into that. Just not one person, as I'm sure you know. But uh, it's been really exciting to kind of see you guys play this brand of football to be re-energized, reinvigorated, giving the fans something to cheer about. It's been a blast. So best of luck this Sunday in Miami, and we'll see. When you get back. All right, brother. Yeah. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.